All right, good afternoon. Um, I know you guys had a good lunch. I hope I'm excited enough to keep you awake after that lunch. So I'm part of the Constellation Energy Nuclear Group. I deal mostly with nuclear power. Uh, we don't do fossil, we don't do hydro, we don't do any of the other alternatives other than nuclear. We live in a world that's very regimented. We have a lot of rules we have to follow, a lot of processes we have to go through. Uh, the process that we use, I'll be talking about and how I went through to choose that process. So next. So my problem was, how do I align three individual stations all using different software platforms onto a common platform? The, uh, my company, we were three individual stations. When we became a company, the, uh, I'll explain a little bit, but we had troubles with uh, getting everybody aligned. <clears throat> so some of the background is Constellation Energy is based in Baltimore, Maryland. We're a fleet of three nuclear units in Maryland. And we have uh, two units, I should say three units in New York. We have uh, two stations in New York. Uh, we have Calricliss, which is two units. We have Nine Mile Point, which is two units. And we have Guinea Station, which is a single unit. So part of the problem was the stations were bought. We allowed those stations to continue to use the products they were using. They might have been homegrown. They might have been purchased by somebody else. They were mismatched. They didn't talk very well to each other. We needed to become aligned as a fleet. So how did I do this? Well, first I had to evaluate what was common amongst all the stations. Everybody has to do operator rounds. Everybody has to do narrative logs. We have to track our actions for tech specs, technical requirements manuals, all site dose calculation, things like that. So we needed to document the events, as I mentioned. The engineers need to be tracked the equipment performance. Uh, we're older stations. We don't have some of the newer technologies that you see presented here this week. We have a lot of old things. The operators have to go around and collect data. We collect that data manually. Uh, and then we would put it in maybe an equip, uh, Excel spreadsheet, uh, some other software that didn't talk very well. We couldn't export it, import it, things like that. And then maintenance need to be able to identify when the equipment was in a condition where they were able to go out and perform work safely. ESOMS is the product we use, and the safety tagging program is part of the product. We found that we were losing a lot of time in the operators to go out and put the plan in the safe condition for the maintenance people to go out and start working. And then we would lose that communication process. We had to figure out how to do that better. And then finally, we had to be able to track all of our licensing requirements things that we were limited to that wouldn't allow us to run the plant because of the condition we were in. So the next thing I did was I researched software. I didn't just settle on a software. I went out and I looked. I got everybody involved, asked them, how do we want to do this? And what's the best thing for you to use? You know, we, we, do we want to just go and enter it manually on a desktop, or do we want to take a handout out? You want to have a laptop? Things like that. We all talked about it. All right, so what did I choose? I chose ESOMS. Reason being, it had everything I needed. I wanted to save time. Uh, I'm an operator. I am not a maintenance mechanic, even though I like to say that I am. I'm an operator. I've been licensed to run a nuclear power plant for 16 years. I was a non-licensed operator before that. I'm an operator. So I wanted everything to be easy for me, right? It's very me-oriented in the nuclear world. You know, nuclear operations runs the plant. Maintenance is a support function. Everybody else supports operations. <clears throat> and I wanted my IT department to be able to support the program easily. With the pro processes that we had, we had four, maybe five separate IT individuals supporting different programs, different processes. We have multiple servers running processes, things like that. So we had to try and get all this together and make it easier for everybody who's using the new process to function. And finally, I wanted something that was familiar to the people who come in to support our plant store and outages, basically the vendors. If we have refueling outages, we have all these people come in who are familiar with products throughout the industry. But when you come in and, and you have your home grown process, they had to learn how to do work safely in the plant. Choosing the product, I went out and I found out most of the industry right now is using the software. It made sense to go out and get a product that people were familiar with. We might use it slightly different. You know, our, our procedures might be slightly different, but the process itself is the same. And this made it so that it was making it safe 
for those maintenance workers coming in to support us to do their job safely. So safety, for the safety process, I was able to put the tag out procedure into the software. I didn't have to go and ask the software company to go and change the product because my procedure said to do something. I was allowed to do it the way the software was already written. I could put in what I wanted. Any evaluations I wanted, I could put it in there. You know, approvals, I could put it in there. I was also to track the workers electronically. We were using a paper process, so when you're out there doing work, and you have people signed on to a piece of paper, it's very hard for us in the operations field to say, these guys are being safe. One, I don't know they're signed on because I might have to do something inside that safety boundary because of the plant conditions. I needed to know who was on that at the time. And electronically is the right way to do it. Tag sharing is another thing. Electronically, you can have one tag on one component. And it's protecting multiple workers under multiple tag outs. For, and, and it's easier for the operator. You're taking away that error to go out and put the component into the wrong position. He goes out one time, hangs the tag. You have multiple people being protected by that tag under multiple tag outs. So then when the work is done, he goes out one time and lifts that tag and puts a component in the proper position. Takes away the error. I shouldn't be removing this because there's other work going on in the plant. I want those people to be safe. First and foremost is safety. And then finally, how do I do a good communication process? Remember I said that we were having troubles with the operators would go out and put the plant in a safe condition, let them go to work, but we weren't communicating that very well because we're busy. Well now, once the software sees that we put the tag out in a status that allows the workers to go to work, it electronically sends them a message through the software saying, hey, this tag out's hung, you guys can go to work. And it works the other way around too. We also have a tag so that when I'm the approval authority of the tag out, when all the work is done, I get a message that says, hey, all the work is done. You're ready to go ahead and take this tag out off and put the piece of equipment back in the service. So site communications, everybody needs to be able to see stuff. There were things in the processes that we could do. Uh, I like to say I focus on the equipment database. That's what really drives my processes. Everything for a piece of equipment is in one location. With that, I can go and take a narrative log entry with a piece of equipment and associate it with it. So now if I go look at the equipment database, I can say, hey, at this time, this piece of equipment was put in this position by this person and for this reason. If I'm out working on a safety tag out and I want to know, hey, uh, this doesn't look like the right one or what's this line come in? I hadn't seen it before. I attach drawings to those tag outs now. They can be marked up or they can be linked to the, to the component. Um, what it does is it makes it easier for the operators who are out hanging a tag out to do the work. It also makes it easier for the maintenance guys being protected to understand why did I put that component in that position. You know, it doesn't look right to me, but they can get to that drawing and say, oh, now I know why it's connected over here. It's easier for that. Um, we can also go back and track historically. Very good for event reconstruction. If you have an accident in the plant, I won't say an accident, if you have an event in the plant and you need to go back and reconstruct it, the software is allowing me to go back and say, this component was put in this position. I have a narrative log entry to say, here's what I did. I have a procedure that says, here's what I did. I have a tag out that says, here's what I did. And the component's in this position for this reason why. If it's not there, I know I got to go back sometime in this time frame and figure out, well, put it there. Configuration control in my nuclear world, very big deal. We have to figure out where our positions are all the time for all the components in the plant. The other thing is, the operators go out on the round. They're taking the data. They see that eh, the oil level is low in this piece of equipment. Well, now I link to the equipment database again. What oil do I need to put in it? The guys don't have to go back and call somebody to go dig up some paper somewhere. You know, we're lots of paper everywhere in the nuclear world. It's right there for him. He just goes to the oil room, gets the oil, puts it in. He's done. He puts a log entry in saying, hey, I added oil which goes back for the engineering people now. Hmm, I've added oil seven times in the last six weeks. There might be something wrong with this. It gets them thinking, hey, I gotta go out and start figuring out what's wrong with this piece of equipment. So some of the benefits for IT were 
it's a single software suite that supports our fleet. It's the same architecture for all the sites. Uh, the support personnel already support the fleet, not just a station or not just a unit. Nine mile point, as I mentioned earlier, is two units. But the two units are so different in type, it's really one station and another station just on the same site. So I have two different people doing the same function for two different units. Uh, basically, it's an overall reduction in the IT footprint. The one application suite result in reduction in servers and databases to maintain. Really, we had five databases and three servers. Now we're down to one database, which is the ESOMS database. And we got a couple others that we support with it, but basically the ESOMS database. And we only have one IT technician right now working on it. He can support the entire fleet with us. And finally, it was a system um, simplification of system integrations. Again, a single platform. We do write our own software to try and support other processes. So the guy writes the software change, submits it, and now it goes in. An example is we have a, uh, a risk-based process where we say, here's the status of our plant. Well, when we go and change the status of a component in the system, now this, our software says, okay, the status of the components changed. I go and put it in this program called EOS, which is a plant risk analysis program. And it tells us, here's what the plant risk is now. We don't do that manually anymore, it does it for us. So it's, it's another driver to help improve the efficiency of the plant, make it so that the people aren't manually doing all this work all the time, makes it much easier for them. The regulatory benefits that we have, again, we're always tracking our tech spec entries, our technical requirement entries, and we have something called dose, off-site dose calculation manual. We're always tracking these things. These what tell us how long we can run if something's not in the conditions that we're supposed to be in. We might get a three-day shutdown statement, a seven-day shutdown statement. It might be shut down right now because something's really bad. But the software allows us to go ahead and track this. The thing that we were having problems with was we would go and we enter a condition. And we have maybe seven days to take whatever actions we have to to get the condition resolved. Well, it's the way we were doing it was we just make a log entry and somebody had to remember I got seven days and it's not really seven days it's 164 hours to get this resolved so from the time you make the entry you got that time limit not seven days but 164 hours to do it so you have to remember I'm um, coming due I've got to get something done right now the software does it for him it'll provide him that notification Really, it's, I'll tell you, the guys don't like it because I have it doing it every two hours. They think it's annoying. I think it's great because it's putting it right in front of them all the time. And we're not doing it. The software does it for us. It keeps them abreast. We haven't missed a tech spec action since we've done this. <clears throat> so, and the other thing is, for me, when I have to go and report out why did we not take action for our requirements, it's, it's really uncomfortable to get in front of the NRC and explain some of these things to them and just say, yeah, we forgot, doesn't work. You have to have a reason why, you have to explain yourself. Right now the software is helping us prevent those occurrences. So what lessons learned did I have at it? The first thing I did was I created a cross-discipline team. Um, I included people from all of the different disciplines. Right, operations is running the software, but I had engineers, I had instrumentation and control people, I had maintenance people. I had a whole cross section of people telling me, here's what I want to see in the software. What can you do to help me, as those other departments, get my jobs done more efficiently? Getting that cross discipline team together was really important. And I'll tell you what, I learned it the hard way. I started off not doing it that way because I thought it's an operations thing, we'll tell them what to do. But as we started progressing through it, I got the feedback from them. I really learned the hard way. So, um, got to demonstrate the importance of the change. So when I finally said to the regulators, I said, here's why we're putting the software and here's how it's going to help. They understood it. They've seen it used elsewhere. But getting that demonstration down for everybody to see, this is a change. It's different than the way you're doing business. You're comfortable, right? I don't want to change. But here's this new process in doing business. So once you get those people convinced that this is the right thing to do, it helps you along. Uh, communicate. And you've got to do it frequently. And I cannot stress that enough. Have meetings. Send out emails. 
uh, put out communication flyers, whatever you need to do to say this is coming. You don't want to have these people just all of a sudden be hit with this change. You want them to know it's coming. You want them to have the input. And you want the input given to you because you want to give them the product that's best for them. You want to be efficient for you, but you want it to be efficient for them. Because it's not just they support me. For real operations, supports them as well. And and there we go. And then celebrate. And I can't emphasize this enough either. It's it's you've got to tell the guys, hey, thanks for helping me. Right? If, if they don't feel that they had a part in what they're doing, you're still not going to get it. It might be the best process in the world. If those people don't think they had a part in, in helping you develop and then implement this process, they're not going to use it. They're going to come up with reasons why they don't want to use it. But when they're part of the game and part of making this process work at your site, they want to use it. They want it to work the best for them. I'll tell you right now, I get more feedback now that we've already implemented the process at all three of my sites from those people and how can I make this do something differently? We learn stuff all the time. And I'll give you an example. I talked about it just last night. In an operator rounds one, we knew you could attach like photos and, and videos and things like that. So we had a guy at one of my stations. He goes out and he's taking a tours. We call them tours. And he gets to this pump and it's making this funny sound. Right, so he, we, he goes in and he writes a deficiency report. It says, Pump's making a funny sound. He tried to explain it. It went through our review process. And the guy said, eh, they didn't give us enough detail, so they canceled it. Well, the operator who's out doing a tour goes out the next night and sees that mm, they canceled this deficiency report. And the reason why is it's not detailed enough. So what's he do? And I didn't even think about this. He goes out and he takes this handheld that we use to take our tours records the sound. Now they know exactly what the pump is doing. He attaches it to the round, uploads it, and he attaches it to another deficiency report. I'll tell you what, that was the best thing he ever did because now they know that we can do this. I never thought about attaching the sound. I've always attached pictures. I've attached the video, but they're pretty process intensive, especially on the handheld. But the sound thing, I never thought about it. That was efficient. That was good. We got that pump fixed. We realized that it was a problem early on. Not, we didn't wait for it to break. Right? We caught it up front. And that's what the software could do for us. You attach that image, you attach that sound bite, you attach that video to it, and get it there. It can be in a log. It can be in a, a tour. So now you have other operators out there, and they, they heard it too, but they didn't think it was a big deal. Well, now you can attach it. So when the guys are out there doing their tour, you got this file attached so you can hear it. This is what it sounds like. If you hear this, you got to do something. Things like that. Good stuff to do for the non-licensed guys. It makes their job easier. And basically, it was change management 101. You know, it's a, I've been through change management classes. Uh, you know, I kind of thought, hmm, makes sense, but I wanted to do this process. I'm going to tell you what I want to do. And you're going to do it for me. And I learned the hard way. You really got to get people involved, get them associated with the process, make them really feel that it's something that they want to do as well. Change Management 101. And I'm pushing forward. <laughs>